So you mentioned earlier the word phobia, and there's a phobia you were telling me about that's been going on in the health and food world. Could you tell me a little about orthorexia? Yes, orthorexia, which is the clinical term for a basic a food obsession or a phobia of toxicity in food, mm -hmm. right? So this is the thing that happens a lot of times when people go on extreme food binges. It's, it's not anore anorexia, right? It's orthorexia, which is a pretty much a similar psychological disempowering kind of belief system is that basically what you do is you, you, you get so obsessed about eating all the right kind of foods that you minimize your options over time until you eventually come to like a very narrow amount of foods that you can eat and, and maybe feel good about that it's so low that it's not enough to support you, mm -hmm. right? And you develop this whole neurological construct around food where you believe that this is toxic, that's toxic, everything is toxic for you, everything is bad for you, where, you know, that becomes a reality for you. And then again, you narrow out your food supply so you have very little to choose from. Mm -hmm. And we see these people, they, they, they oftentimes have, um, have, a, have like an edginess to them, have, a, have an abrasiveness to them. Oftentimes we call them a health nut. Right, that corner you in the nut aisle of a health food store and just blast you for, for on. They drive you into the corner and they tell you every reason that this is bad for you, that's bad for you. Too much fat is bad for you. You need to eat 30 bananas a day. This, that thing, and the other. Right? Yeah. It basically is like a really, in, in our modern day raw food, it's taken on the form of. Um, like 80-10-10 diets where you eat like 80% carbohydrates, 10% fat, 10% protein, which can be good as a temporary diet or a temporary experiment, mm -hmm. but it's not designed to actually carry out long term. Yeah. And there we've seen, I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly mm -hmm. of the raw food world. I've seen diets work really, really good for people, and I've seen them catastrophically fail. I mean, to the point where people lose their teeth, they lose hair, they lose, um, they, they have extreme bags under their eyes, their adrenal glands are completely shot because they're not getting certain, certain um, nutrients, enough of protein, enough fats to actually power their adrenal glands to produce adrenaline naturally. Mm -hmm. um, they base and they're eating tons of fruit all the time. If, well, oftentimes when the fruit is not actually good for their form of metabolism, where they trade out what would be good for them and they trade it for high amounts of fruit, hybridized fruit, mind you, that is, is very weak genetically. Um, it's been bred out, hybridized, it's been bred to actually have more sugar and a low amount of minerals to be bigger and plumpier and sugarier than it ever was meant to be by nature. And just loading up on sugar, basically. And I've seen this fail so many times with people. It doesn't just fail physically, right? It also sh shows up neurologically in their speech patterns, memory retention, the ability to actually be grounded because they start to float off into outer space and they have no, basically they have no minerals that ground them to the earth, mm -hmm. right? So they're just kind of floating around. You see it on YouTube where people are just bantering back and forth. Um, this happens a lot in the vegan um, militia mm -hmm. that I've seen is where nothing against veganism because I'm very much in that, that world. But th when it comes to the fraction of people that have a neurological imbalance and an orthorexia imbalance, then they tend to, to, they tend to polarize against every other thing that, has, that, that is in conflict or is of a different opinion than their set rule, mm -hmm. right? So orthorexia tends to, to cause people to have rules, it's really ingrained rules about their health and their life and what's healthy and their diet and what they're allowed to eat and not allowed to eat. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy of, of pathology, Yeah. right, is basically what that comes down to. What do you feel is really at the root of orthorexia? What, how would someone, you know, actually live life mm -hmm. as if as an orthorexic? I, I guess the simple answer is that it's it's a it's an extreme food obsession. I think it's definitely a, it's a, it's a spiritual, emotional, and mental disharmony, 
right? Because you can, you know, you could be imbalanced and pretty much adopt any any allergy-free type of diet out there and make it work somehow. As long as you you eliminate the foods that you are actually allergic to, mm -hmm. you can make anything pretty much work. Now, does it work to peak to peak potential? You know, that that's when you get into more of the details. Mm -hmm. But it's it's this thing where you basically develop an obsession about what you believe the right way to eat is. And we, typically this comes out of like the old school natural hygiene raw food movement of the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, and a lot of it was created by by um, someone named Dr. Herbert Shelton, the natural hygiene movement, which had a lot of amazing principles for healing, mm -hmm. really. But, um, but actually what happened to Dr. Herbert Shelton is that he suffered 13 years of a neurological disease, neurological breakdown. There's another guy, um, uh, Johnny Love Wisdom. He was a fruitarian back in those days. And I can't remember what exactly happened, but he broke down as well. He had some really big um, neuromuscular, neurodegenerative condition, and he, he died of it. Right? And this is not, those aren't the only two cases. There's been a lot, there's a lot of stuff in the fruitarian and high fruit, low fat world that is not being made available to public. Mm -hmm. to people out there. There's a lot of people that have suffered on those diets and that's not being shown to the public. It's being covered up by a propaganda and, and vegan propaganda essentially and it's not actually being honestly discussed about the pros and the cons by the people that have the loudspeakers mm -hmm. that are they're just spewing out information telling you that you need to do this because it's the right thing to do, and if you don't do it, it's basically blame. It's blameism, mm -hmm. blaming other people for your problems because their their food habits are imposing on your way of life, mm -hmm. right? As if their behavior has drastic implications on your reality, your experience for reality. Right now, it's kind of going off another territory, but to me, when I think of orthorexia, I don't just think of food. I think food as being a vehicle for the orthorexic construct to actually vehicle itself, to yeah. mobilize itself into some kind of direction.